The license plate we're working on here appears to be in pretty good physical condition, but it has what looks to be red primer on the front and has some of the original paint still on the back, which will be good for a color guide. Sometimes you get lucky and when you go in the store you find a rattle can of Rust-Oleum or other good enamel that's just the right color for your plate. In this case, no such luck. So we'll have to mix the right color before we go to work on the plate while we still have the original paint on the plate as a guide to mix the color. I doubt that the video can show this, but the paint right out of the can is just a little too yellow to match the original paint. We'll have to add a little bit of red and see what happens. Actually, I've decided I'll use a little bit of orange, not go quite as radically different as using red. And I want to get just a little tiny bit to start off with. It's a lot easier to add just a little bit of color than to try to make up for a mistake later with a whole lot more yellow. Once I have painted the right color, then I can strip the old paint off the plate. That old paint, especially the red primer, is pretty tough, so we're going to have to try another dose of paint remover. Now that I've taken off all the 
paint that's going to come off, I'll find the back side of the plate is smooth and shiny and the front side is rough and a lot of the paint is stuck to it and I suspect that may be from rust so we're going to give this a rust treatment just to make sure there's no rust under the paint. Since the rough surface suggests there may be some rust under there, well, I will just go with an overnight soaking of rust remover. After rust removal, I like to give the plate a dose of metal prep. In this case, it's DuPont 5717S, which uh, should prevent any reforming of rust underneath the paint job. The next step is body work. We're going to try to take out all the dings, dents, and bends that we can. For example, here is a dent right here in the three that we'll try to flatten out.
And then, once we've got the thing as flat and smooth as we can manage, we'll give it a coat of primer. Next step after the primer is dry, sanding. Sanding shows where primer is filled in, the low spots like this, as we see here, and here, and here. The pits are filled in and a lot of the shallower low spots, but there are some deeper dings that need more filling, so we'll put on some more primer and cook it and do a little more sanding. After the second coat of primer, sand it down again, see if all the low places are filled. After sanding, we can see that the little pits and low places are pretty well filled here, and here, and here, along here. And over here, and there were some little dimples here that are filled, so I think we're about ready to put on some color. Before we squirt any color on this thing, we're going to wipe it with a nice new sticky tack cloth to be sure there's no dust left at all. Now with one side cooked good and hard, we'll spray the other side. So after we've sanded the plate with 800 grit sandpaper to give it a nice smooth finish and sprayed on a couple of coats of background color and cooked it to get it good and hard, 
We're ready to put on the numbers. First we'll paint just a plain piece of paper to get the screen wet. And the next thing is putting the black on the numbers. So after wiping off any smudges with tissues and paint thinner and cooking the plate, harden the paint, why it's turned out pretty fair. I think if the black had been a little thicker it might have been neater, but this is not too bad.